giving you the top prop bets in NBA today. All right, so we're looking at the board today, guys, and it is going to be an insanely favorable board today. It is pretty crazy. So I'm going to start with NHL, but there are like 10 really favorable bets. And, you know, throughout the week, we struggled to get these favorable bets. And that's kind of why I'm excited about including MLB as a sport as well, because it's just going to open up the opportunities for us to have favorable lines that we can bet. Uh, so I'm going to start with NHL and MLB, a little bit of college basketball, and then deep dive into NBA. So as it sits right now, NHL wise, we are getting two favorable props for the over. Okay, we see minus 140 for over 2.5 shots on goal, and then minus 138 for over 2.8 shots on goal. Very favorable there, so we'll take those odds. And for what it's worth, this is kind of interesting that the average sportsbook line has this line set at 2.5, and it's, you know, obviously it's favoring the under here, but not by much. I mean, this is kind of a push there, so just interesting there as well. So if we just pull it up here, we can see he has been over 2.5 shots on goal in all of the last four, except for the most recent game. Okay, I'm guessing without looking at it, it's probably just some missed shots or something like that. So definitely a good bet on paper to get back to 2.5 shots on goal. And then we do have Alex as well. Uh, this was favored at minus 138 to get over 2.5 shots on goal. We can see over the last four games, he's been close to gain the over or he has gotten the over. That is what I like to see. I like to see someone that's going to give us a good chance at getting it. Uh, minus 138, we'll take those odds. Then just real quickly, we'll touch on some college basketball props that we're getting. Most of the college basketball props that we're getting throughout the week, we already have exposure to. Uh, the best one that we're seeing right now is going to be golden over 15.5 points, rebounds, and assists. And we can see really so far this tournament, he's only had that one really good game against Kansas State. Now, at the same time, it was a little bit shocking that he hadn't been able to have some you know, better games than that. So I kind of get why they're favoring it at the same time. Probably feels like we'd be uh, forced this one a little bit. But remember, at the start of this video, I just want to give you guys the favorable odds because if we chase the favorable odds day in and day out, that's going to yield some positive results. And then, yeah, looking at it, Greenlee is the only one that we're still getting for uh, the over. Got about a point difference in the prop line there as well. Now let's get into the MLB prop. And guys, I have no idea how long these are going to be available today, but look at these. These are crazy. Minus 146 for J.P. Crawford to get over 0.5 total bases. So the only worry that we have with J.P. Crawford here is the fact that he was batting ninth yesterday. Okay, he was able to get a walk. So that's that's encouraging. So obviously, I would say the biggest risk that we have is where he's batting. If he's only batting ninth, could be a little bit less opportunities to get some at bats. You know, we want to give ourselves, it's like NBA minutes. We want to give ourselves the most minutes in NBA DFS and MLB, we want to give ourselves the most at bat. And then with that, we're going to see a theme is that there are some teams that we kind of just want to be targeting. Okay. We got Hernandez over 1.5 hits, runs, and RBIs. And this is favored at minus 145. Now this one I find very interesting. When over four yesterday, did bat fourth, which is obviously a desirable spot. I mean, it was just the fact that he went over four that the sportsbooks are saying, all right, he's going to have a good game. And it, it has to do with the matchup as well, because a lot of the favorable props that we're getting are coming out of that game. We got another one. And these ones, the total bases, like it's it's fine. It's kind of like shots on goal, um, except for shots on goal. You know, a player can miss the net. A player can get a shot blocked. Whereas this, it's just get on base. So here we can see his bat in fifth yesterday was able to get on base one for five. I uh, obviously like the volume of at bats. And so I'm just trying to go through the process of kind of why these are favorable bets. I mean, these are insane. We could keep going, guys. These are all just very solid bets that we are getting. So we got another interesting one here. Okay. Did not start yesterday. Was facing a left-hander. Today going to be facing a right-hander. So that would suggest that he's going to start. I'd be interested to see where he's going to be batting once again more at bats just means more attempts to get on base uh but still one for two yesterday uh, an exciting player out there so we got another one minus 143 for over 0 0.5 bases we can see yesterday jared did have a good game went one for three the only issue is that he bad seventh but another one in that seattle game and so maybe we have the potential for some stacks there um but really as the slate is kind of breaking down i think we're just gonna be chasing all these favorable odds that we are getting and then we continue on like lance lynn we could roll with as well like these are all pretty good bets that we are getting out there it's just crazy how many minus 140 or better bets that we are getting today in nhl or in mlb and so like my bets of the day are literally just gonna be loading up on these uh and just hoping that they hit and like we had the potential for those game stacks and so just to show you guys here like we have two of them from seattle that we saw were favorable prop bets that we were getting and obviously these day 
back to, oh, they actually are including spring. That's interesting. And so now because of yesterday being opening day in MLB, we have 13 games in NBA DFS today. So there are going to be a lot of favorable lines that just open up throughout the day. Uh, hopefully we'll have some favorable props to touch on in this video as well. Let's just go through the process like we typically would. So looking at it, like we already have Wagner popping up as one of the better prop bets on the day. Now it's only minus 132. Uh, and the assist is only favored slightly over. But if you guys have been watching my coverage, you know I've been really kind of using Wagner a lot lately just because the minutes have been there for him. And it's really a situation in which if the minutes are going to continue to be there, that's kind of a game that I want to continue to target. Like earlier on in the season, he wasn't like really getting over 30 minutes really for the most part. I mean, 31, 32. Now we have seen spike games where he gets 39, 37. And so it does worry me a little bit that the last three games, he's only gotten 32 minutes. It's a little bit worrisome. But he has been shooting the basketball a ton. Okay, the matchup's pretty solid. Uh, it, it would feel like we're forcing this one a little bit, but I'm fine kind of rolling the hot hand. If you guys have been someone that's been rostering him a lot, you can still go with that. And part of the reason why I like that game is because it's supposed to be a close scoring game. Uh, the Wizards could potentially be without their big Daniel Gafford. And so that'd be uh, along with Bradley Beal being out and also Kyle Kuzma being out. So that would open up a lot of production, a lot of usage. And so like looking at it, yeah, Porzingis should be able to go off in some sort of capacity. Okay. Uh, his per 36 numbers with Gafford, Beal, and Kyle Kuzma off the court is 30.2 points per 36 10.4 rebounds and 4.2 assists he also averages a block or two blocks and a steal okay so most likely gonna be a great fantasy option today especially going against orlando we can see on the game log the last time we went against orlando had a good game there as well okay bradley beal did play in that game against orlando and so did gafford so perzingis kind of just becomes an elite option if gafford beal and kuzma are all still ruled out by game time and so this could be one of those situations in which maybe you just really target it right now but at the same time are there any other props that we can target instead i think fantasy score is going to be a good one it really just depends on where that number falls. And Porzingis has been a guy that I hate trusting with fantasy score. He's just a little bit hit or miss. But if it's under 50 at all, like I feel like that'd be a good fantasy score for him just because he does average around three blocks. So that should really make up for the production there. And if he is getting you know 10 rebounds, that's a lot. And so we could also potentially do over rebounds as well. Uh, let's just pull that up on the big board here as well. So the points and assists is actually the one that they're telling us to use. I, I probably am not doing that. I think I'd rather do rebounds and assists if I'm chasing an individual prop. But we can also see points and rebounds. The average sportsbook line has it set at 35, okay? And we're getting it at 34 and a half. And the average sportsbook line is favoring at minus 114 to get over 35. So maybe this is the bet that we're making points and rebounds for Porzingis. Just once again, the per 36 numbers say that he should be over this by a decent margin. But I do, I, I feel like given the match with Orlando, we should be able to get a good fantasy score prop. And yeah, for what's worth, like Wagner, it's it seems pretty low for this matchup with Washington. Uh, his points, rebounds, and assists. Like as long as those minutes are there for him, should be solid. Now, if we knew for sure that Monte Morris was going to get 30 plus minutes, then this would probably be a favorable prop that we'd be attacking. If we look at his per 36 production, he averages 15.5 points, 4.7 rebounds, and 7.7 .7 assists per 36 with Beal, Gafford, and Kyle Kuzma off the court. We see though in his last game only at 28 minutes. And my biggest question would be, is that simply because the game was a blowout? Okay. Because if we look at the last game against Orlando, did have 32 minutes in that game. Uh, Beal did play in that game though. And so the, the next two games, 24 and 19. So that's a little bit concerning to me. It's very much a bet on the minutes. And so we can see kind of based off his averages thus far this season, we are seeing the, the projections are all saying, yeah, he's probably not going to get there, but that's not adjusting for the per 36 production. I'm curious. I just want to see his projected minutes on tonight's slate. 28. If he does get 28, he should be able to get there in some capacity, whether it is points and rebounds, which... He should be able to get there just in points if it's per 36, but that's we're missing out on like eight minutes there. So I guess it is a little bit of a tight line there. But I do think there's a little bit of a, a stack opportunity there. Porzingis, Wagner, and then maybe Monte Morse. And then there's kind of another exciting game earlier or on the early part of today's NBA slates because OKC is going to be without SGA and Halliburton is going to be 
out for the Pacers. And if the Pacers are going to be without Miles Turner as well, who's currently a game time decision, that could open up a lot of favorable props. That's going to be a fun game to stack. And so right now we're not getting any props for Jalen Williams, L-E-N Williams, not J Williams with a Y. And this, I don't know, this feels a little bit too tight for Josh Giddy. Um, you look at his per 36 production with SJ off the court, he averages 18.4 points, 8.5 rebounds. Okay, so 26 total there. And then about eight assists. So like in theory, this line should be set at 34. Now, I believe we're getting this line because of the matchup with the Pacers. It should be an easier uh, matchup. And so I'm guessing that's why we're getting this number. And like we do know the minutes are probably going to be there for him. And then Isaiah Joe, he is very much a three ball dependent play. And so we probably want to points rebounds and assists that just wouldn't make any sense and i was oh man i was kind of hoping we would get a three ball prop but maybe we could do points okay I, I don't mind that we look at his last two games 33 and 32 minutes he went 0 for 7 so the fact that he had a terrible night shooting and still shot seven is encouraging to me if he makes three of those he's already at you know nine more points and so he easily gets the over there as well. He is someone that night in and night out, you know, one of the best three ball shooters in the league. He is going to get out there and chuck. You look at his per 36 three ball attempts with SJF the court, he averages 10.5 and makes four of them. Okay, so let's just say he does that. He is basically there for his minutes or for his points. His per 36 points are 19 per 36 with SJF the court. So it doesn't seem like he is being properly adjusted for on something like prize picks. And so this, oh, that's indeed. This could potentially be a bet that we actually make on DraftKings Sportsbook where, you know, we only have to have one of it hit. Unless we're using it in a game stack, then we could do that. But right now, Joe, over 15.5 points is probably my favorite NBA prop on the day. Uh, just given the fact that he's coming off of a poor night shooting, gets a good matchup, expecting to have a much better game as long as those minutes are still there. And Dort, I just kind of find interesting, okay? The minutes have been there for him recently as well. He's been playing much more productive the problem that i seem to have with dort is that I, I just i haven't been able to get him right this whole season he uh definitely sees a huge bump in production with sga at the court uh averages 4.1 more fancy points per 36 and about a 6.3 percent bump in usage as well so uh given the matchup like this is another situation in which we might have the potential for a game stack there now we're not getting any props for charlotte just yet uh if we get news that terry rogier dennis smith jr are both going to be out along with Kelly Oubre like oh and even Gordon Hayward if he is out as well he's doubtful then PJ Washington and that's why we don't have the props to shut PJ Washington just becomes probably a hammer home bet it's the same situation uh from the 28th where we kind of bet on the fact that you know he can get there alone with those players being active but if they're out, his usage goes off the charts. And so if we look at his production with Hayward, Rogier, Oubre, and Dennis Smith Jr. off the court, and LaMelo Ball, it's not a big sample size, but he averages about 8.4 in usage rate, a bump in usage rate of about 8.4%, averaging about 5.7 more points per 36. And for what it's worth, if they're all out, uh, JT Thor could have some appealing props as well. Uh, so maybe I'm going to be busy this weekend, uh, leaving kind of early this Friday. Maybe I can come out with a quick afternoon video as well because there could be some potential for some really strong lines there out of charlotte and then kind of same thing for utah as well boston is coming in off of a back-to-back -back, uh so you know they could potentially struggle um and we know that utah is just banged up jordan clarkson colin saxon are going to be out um and then also Lori markin is out because of that because those three are all out i do think we could potentially look at horton tucker who has been going off the last two games because he's been forced to go off like this is a situation and let's look at the game yeah they're projected to get blown out if horton tucker struggles boston's gonna win by probably more than that like his fancy point total per 36 with those three players off the court is 43.5 fancy points per 36 a usage rate of 29.4% averages 23.7 points 6.5 rebounds and 6.5 assists now he does average 3.5 turnovers as well so that could potentially be something we do as well maybe over turnovers if we get that prop we also know that Julius Randle is going to be out tonight which should mean that a lot of usage is going to be available now we actually see that uh quickly gets a lot more run with Randle off the court and he has been getting a lot of run recently. So minutes wise, it goes quickly. Topin, Hartenstein, RJ Barrett. And we have to go pretty far down to get Jalen Brunson minutes. But I think that's just a situation in which the backups were playing when Randall wasn't because obviously Randall gets heavy minutes. The New York players get heavy minutes as is. So quickly could be someone we're looking at, though. I do think we will probably see a smaller lineup here. Um, I'm not saying quickly we'll start, but definitely interesting there. But right now, the prop that we're getting is Jalen Brunson. And so 
his sample would be 25.8 points per 36 with Julius Randle off the court, 3.1 rebounds, and 7 assists. So if we combine the rebounds and assists, that's about 11. And then attach that to points, it's about 37 points or so. 36. So yes, the matchup with Cleveland is difficult. And so it, it's probably a stay away. Uh, it really depends on where the fantasy score comes in on him if we're if we're trying to get a bet on Brunson. And then in that game as well, we do know that Jared Allen, currently a game time decision, he is not in the projected starting lineup. And so I kind of have two takeaways from that. Like Evan Mobley should be able to feast if that holds up, especially against New York, especially against, uh, you know, backup centers, backup bigs. Mitchell Robinson is a starter and whatnot, but still should be able to feast. Um, his per 36 production is 9.6 points, 10 rebounds, and three assists. And we can see he has been just dominating recently as well. Lavert is starting projected to start and so he is someone that has been productive uh with him off the court as a whole now the last three games not true uh but he does average 14.8 points per 36 4.4 rebounds 4.4 assists as well so i could see maybe a slight little game stack here as well and so there are a lot of props that will be coming in throughout the day i do think we have a nice little potential here to game stack Detroit and Houston. Like Houston's been a team that we've been wanting to pick on a bunch. Okay. So like I would say Kevin Porter Jr. We could do be fine with that. Jalen Green messed up a, a stack that I had um, against Brooklyn. The one that I gave you guys out two days ago. He was the only one that missed, <laughs> which was painful. And that's kind of the thing, though. It's I probably shouldn't have done both of them together. Like you shouldn't stack Green and Porter Jr. together. It's one or the other. And then with Detroit, it's kind of tough because they run out three bigs and all three bigs can be productive with James Wiseman and Bagley. But we don't get Duran props. I'm getting so sick of not getting Jalen Duran props. I don't really get what's going on there. It's it's annoying. At this point, it's very annoying. But that's a game that should stay close, and I think it's going to be a little bit easier to score. Like I, I feel like this number is a little bit too low here. And then lastly, I find it very interesting that we are getting a Keldon Johnson prop in general, simply due to the fact that he is a game time decision. But like he would probably just be a load up on type of prop today at this current number. 31.5 and I know it's a matchup with the Warriors and I'm sure they're expected to get crushed 18 point it is crazy the amount of blowouts we've had like just the the numbers and that does make it a little bit tougher to predict um you know obviously day in and day out but Keldon Johnson with Zach Collins with Jeremy Sochan and let's toss in Yakum Pertle into that sample has been going off per 36 averages 4.7 more points or fancy points per 36 has a bump in usage of about 5.9% to give him a usage rate of 33% per 36 with those three players off the court. Averages 28.5 points per 36, 6.9 rebounds, and 3.3 assists. The question here, again, would be what minutes will he get? How many minutes will he get? And so I would say this definitely depends on the game, if the game stays close or not. Okay, the issue with the Spurs has always been this season games blowing up, but we can see Calvin Johnson has really just been going off lately. Okay, and with Zach Collins out tonight as well, should be able to go off, but he is currently a game time decision. We have to make sure that he is going to play. I would project him to get right around 30 minutes. Okay, and like for what's worth, like Sandro, the backup center probably going to get a good prop line on him as well and like for what it's worth like the Dort prop that I mentioned earlier we can see that he's being undervalued uh, by about a half of a assist or point so we could potentially do that one and we can say it's fair to minus 124 so if we bump that number down to let's say 16.5 it'd be closer to like minus 138 and right now we are getting a, a bunch of props where we're getting at least of a half of a point difference that is crazy those will probably all get bumped so we could you know potentially take advantage of that as well so just a reminder like this is a day in which we are getting so many favorable lines and if you guys are current nine to five site members uh just be checking the board throughout the day before you make the props because it's going to be adjusting throughout the day uh if you guys aren't nine to five site members and you want to become one get access to that tool that i show it is ten dollars a month that's included in the fantasy golf membership the masters are coming up i already have that data pulled in there as well uh so check it out if you want ten dollars a month like if you are playing every day like prize picks every day it's a solid investment like it's less than a dollar a day you know so that's pretty crazy uh but looking at it this is the best nhl prop that we're getting on paper this could adjust throughout the day and i just want to make that clear this could easily adjust throughout the day and the toughest part about having so many favorable bets is that i kind of have to do this uh but here's another one that i like uh just in general the mlb props that we saw uh these are all over minus 140 and so really what we'd want to do is we'd want to individually bet like all these okay in like a, a different way you know like this and then keep that going i mean look at this on the fly art here and then you could also then keep 
keep doing that with all these and that's how you get your proper exposure and that's kind of what i'm always trying to do with these big cards like that and then nba wise these are my favorite bets as well the only issue that i have with these is that it feels like they would just be better bets on the sports books <laughs> because you know odds wise they're all favored as kind of pushes and we're really just chasing per 36 production but that's kind of the beauty of late season nba dfs is that it's tougher for the really data to adjust for it completely and so we are getting some favorable lines here i am continuing to roll with wagner i'm not really suggesting that you do that although it's a favorable matchup and we do have that little bit of a stack that we could potentially do there you know those should correlate together uh with kevin porter it's either him or Jalen green okay one of those two are gonna have a good game in that matchup and then Colin johnson currently questionable should be able to have a good game okay and then evan mobley just per 36 production against new york and some backup pigs with evan mobley off the court and it is predicated on mobley being out he's only currently questionable if he plays like that makes this prop tighter for sure okay but that's all guys i know it was a jam-packed video hopefully you guys enjoyed it just a reminder if you guys want access to that tool it is available for ten dollars a month a uh, great prop tool it updates throughout the day let's have a good slate guys um been batting about 50 percent the last two days which personally i would somewhat take obviously i want to be closer to about 60 percent per day um but with the hot dogs with the majority of those hitting yesterday it was a pretty good day with uh, batting about 50 percent. so let's get up there let's let's hit a couple more and it does feel like we have a strong day that's all i have for you guys let's have a good slate and as always let's keep cashing